update, and as I stated last week, this is going to be more about the long-term direction of um, Bitcoin and some of the other coins that I've, I'm start, I've started to buy. Um, excuse me, still have sinus issues. Uh, so, let's start with Bitcoin, shall we? All right, so we see Bitcoin right here. And it's done this so far, and it's it's kind of gone sideways. So let's go over and draw the lines out. Now, two of the options here. Uh, there's actually more than two. There's never really just two things that are going to happen. There are several possibilities of how this can play out. Uh, one of them is a triangular movement. Uh, remember, we're still looking for this pattern to for it to go all the way back up to the close to 50,000 range. And the reason why is this is what's statistically likely with how this all played out. Um, now, it doesn't have to do it right away. It can do it several things. So let's look at some of the scenarios from right where we are right now. All right, so we have this scenario down here, which it can go kind of sideways to down and how that elongates that's up to it um, the good thing is it didn't do this uh, if it did this that would be a little bit more negative uh, for the overall market but instead it's consolidating more on a, a linear sideways to down movement uh, so that's more positive for the price action for our target up here. So that means it would likely reach it faster. Uh, that's all that tells us. Now, so, you know, what are some of the options? Well, let's say that we go into here. All right, so let's do something like that. Uh, that's an option right there. So I've seen this play out. Or let's go over to the positive options. And remember, uh, there, we're still early in summer, so this move that down that happened from May kind of makes sense, but uh, it did it a little bit ahead of time, so it's just consolidating the time variable here. Uh, so going sideways and, and moving to the downside is just uh, because it did this action too quickly, which makes sense, or else we would have had more of an option, a move like this and so forth, which would be okay for me because again, if it goes under these lows, I'm going to be buying more. My next level down would be 27,500. That's where I start buying more. Uh, all the way down to 25,500 would be the next one down there. So I'll be adding if we do drop down uh, in time. Of course, how it does it is gonna be up to it. Now this is the negative point of view where we make new lows and so forth. That, that's fine. Um, now, let me give you the positive. All right, let's go for the positive. We'll turn this to, uh, and come on, there we go. Blue, let's grab the bottoms right here. Uh -huh. And you can already see this up here. And grab the tops right there. Then you get more of this triangular function right here. So you want to see how this plays out. Uh, does this break out to the upside and us going to our target up here? Now again, this is a short-term target. If I just wanted to um, exit on a profitable trade because of what geometry I have in place, this would be the one that I would be looking for. Uh, but, you know, not really interested. I want to kind of hold on to my crypto, and I'm more interested in the long term. But uh, the reason I'm doing this for you is because I've been asked, and people who want the short-term perspective and care about all of this, uh, they can focus on this if they like. I might sell a little bit above here if I see something that pushes us back to the downside, back to these numbers in the 30,000 range. Uh, but that's not been done yet. First, we have to hit here. That's going to be so. That's my focus is going to be on this before I make any decisions as to what to do. Uh, you know, I've been waiting a long time, many months, for this drop to occur, and 
you know, everybody's like, oh, new highs, new highs. Well, that didn't happen. That wasn't, you know, the, the game plan. And um, now people are like, why, why are we down here? And, you know, that's not the way markets work. Um, this was the most statistically likely thing to occur for us to pull back before we make new highs and continue upward. That's just, that's what statistically was more probable. And I have to go off the probabilities. I can't get emotionally involved and try to think or whatever, you know. I go off the numbers. That's all there is. There's only the numbers, and you don't need to go over and get crazy. You just have to see things logically as they occur. And, you know, that goes right back to observe, plan, and execute, right? We don't have to be right or wrong. We just have to go over and pay attention to what happens most often and make the best trades from there. By doing that, again, I will repeat, is that you set yourself up to be a good trader. So you make good trades based off of what happens most often and your judgment increases, you see more clearly and you do a better job. And, you know, and it applies to anything, anything that you do in trading, you can apply that right back to other you know, stocks, to um, commodities, to short term, to long term. You know, you just have to understand to remember what happens most often and listen to the market because it will tell you. But the key is you have to listen. You can't do this nonsense about uh, reading articles or listening to people on CNBC because they have no clue. They literally have no clue. Usually when they're screaming about something, it's the inverse because it's already happened, right? So when you get these big down moves and they're screaming about it, they screamed about this one, uh, then it bounces, right? So that's kind of the contrarian point of view of their, their, they only do it when they get the most amount of views, which is usually at the peak of something. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the long-term projection. I gave you the short-term. So we're either going to break out up here to here, or we're going to break down to there. And more than likely, we'll do it in a slower fashion on the downside without out a lot of interest. Or we'll do it on a faster fashion on the upside uh, with more interest. Those are the likely probabilities. So we'll see which ones play out. And I really don't care because it's summertime. Um, this is consolidation. You, you buy and you hold, basically. Uh, and I'm not going to get rid of anything until we get above this, this mid-49,000 range. So keep that in mind. I'm completely bullish until we get above there. Um, now, let's go to the long term. All right, expand the chart out. Boom. And you see what I'm looking for. And we got plenty of time. That's the biggest thing I want to um, make known to you is we have lots of time. And that's what I'm looking for. Nothing has changed, right? Nothing has changed here. I'm expecting expansion upwards. This is not does not come across as a top at all. This is consolidation on a bigger, for a much larger move to the upside. And that's what I'll be looking at. Now, the time variable of which this happens within is going to be the, the thing that is going to be focused on more by me. Um, just making my projections, I have a very good idea of what's likely to occur. And this is the most um, likely scenario. So I'll just hold on to my crypto. And this is why I don't really want to sell anything when we get above that 49,000 area because I'm looking for t continuation upward. And the minimum target is this right there. There's really nothing for me to do but wait and hold and wait, you know. Wait and hold. Hold and wait. Either of those. <laughs> um, but you get my point there. All right, now for the portion of the update that you guys have asked for, Let's go to our friends. You know, if we get this for filling with Bitcoin, right? What happens to things like Ethereum? Where do we go with Ethereum? Now, I want you to notice on Ethereum, the move on Ethereum was much faster and much, you know, I wouldn't say it was much bigger because if we look at a rational point of view uh, from where it went, right? So Ethereum's first high way back here was up to around 14K. 
all right? And this was back when I was shorting it. I had the Spanish cross over here, and we got the pullback all the way down to ridiculous numbers. It was under, you know, uh, well under 100. It was all the way down to the 80s and 70s. It was a really great time to buy Ethereum. Uh, but look at the move here. Now, on a percentage basis, what did that go up? It went up a good amount, right? And it was um, equal to going to 4,200 or 4,400. It was basically equal to the Bitcoin move in a percentages. So I want to see that. That is a big um, factor for me uh, on a percentage basis. I want to see equal percentages. Well, Ethereum did that, all right? Um, so Bitcoin went up from 20K all the way up to the 60K range, right? So what is that in terms? Think about that for a minute. So it went from 20 to 60. So it went actually tw twice its amount. Now, did Ethereum do the same thing? Well, let's go over and calculate it, right? What's 1400 and 1400 put together? 2800 what's 1400 and 2800 all right so you see what I'm, I'm getting to here you see how it's equal to the move how Bitcoin in a relative terms so the 60,000 range was twice the 40 uh, 4,000 range was twice the, its old-time high so that's equal to in what you get for the two but notice the incline the rate of incline the speed of which Ethereum did this so this had a lot of enthusiasm when it made its uh, spike up move. Um, so that's a good sign for it in the future. It might go a little bit over. You, you know, you might get some ridiculous thing like the flippening. This is kind of uh, uh, one of the things I look for in certain issues for real strength in them is the rate of incline and the the, uh, the angle, the arc that it goes at. And this has a very high arc. So. In the future, when it does go back up, uh, it's likely going to have more power than a Bitcoin and so forth. But it's still rationally two times, um, you know, 1,400, 428 plus 1,400, 4,200. So, right? So, uh, you know, think about that. And it did that. And, of course, uh, you know, every exchange is uh, different. Some of them have it at 42. This one has it all the way up to 43. Um, but anyway, it did that, and uh, you know, and it, it it finally did it towards the end, where Bitcoin was still kind of on the low side. This had more enthusiasm. Um, so, but it equaled out, and that's my point, and that's what I wanted to see, and it, it did that. Now let's go over and take a look at Litecoin, which is number three. Now Litecoin did not do that. And one of the reasons why is because back when Lee had it, and he dumped all of his Litecoin when he got up to these levels. And Litecoin never made that breakout uh, above the old highs. And that's why I was saying this is such a good uh, trade back, you know, when I did the Litecoin versus BTC, which I rarely never do. Uh, but when it was a, a buy zone down here, this was a screaming buy down this level here if anybody have uh, traded that. And if you want it for the long term, this is still a valid target going out. If you like trading Bitcoin versus other cryptos like uh, Litecoin, for example, this is uh, still a valid target and it's still likely to have upside in the future. And, uh, but uh, this was a trade from months ago. Let's take a look at that. You remember what I was telling you then? This was one area up here uh, from down here. And then you had the bigger move up here. And then you can see that. But Litecoin, longer term, what, what do we want for it? Well, we want it to get it above these highs, okay? So we want to see it go above these highs by a decent amount. And so, you know, where would that be? We get 700 as one marker. <laughs> But this is not a really good marker. I want to see it above these highs by two times. So I'm going to be looking for, what would I be looking for? I'd be looking for numbers that go all the way up to 1,200. So 
So in the future, I can see us getting to above 1,200. Uh, so we're, we'll notice where we are right now <clears throat> for Litecoin. This is a laggard, but I believe this is going to catch up. And when we do get the moves to the upside, this one's going to probably go crazy. And uh, we'll see. It's still in the top, you know, five coins. So we'll see. Uh, but I believe it has a brighter future on a percentage basis, considering where we are. Uh, so I, I have added more of my uh, Litecoin to my portfolio, and I would be looking for above 1,200 in the future. Um, and with Ethereum, if we go up to the 118,000, you know, and I'm looking for these numbers here. I'm going to be again looking for probably above the 10,000 range here by a good amount, uh, maybe up to the 12,000 range. So this has lots of opportunity as well. Not as much as Litecoin, but still it's there. And you can't predict which one's going to go to where, when. You know, it's asymmetrical in nature, so it happens when it happens. Um, but that's what I would be looking for above the 10,000 mark would be conservative. And when it does make its move with Bitcoin, Bitcoin, we're looking for that 118,000 in the future, minimum target. Uh, Litecoin, again, you know what I'm looking for here. I want to see it above the 1200 mark in the future. And then XRP, what can XRP do? Well, XRP, let's go here. This has a long ways to go back up. It still has not breached its old high. So this has much more room to, to grow. And I would like to see it all the way back up to the five, $6 range. So if we think about where that is on a percentage basis, that's pretty good. Uh, but it's like for like all the other ones. If you think about the targets on a percentage basis, if you calculate that, they're going to be maybe not perfectly similar, but of like nature. Uh, there's a few of them because of the where the highs are um, that will have more on a percentage basis, like a Litecoin versus um, other ones, um, like a, a Bitcoin and so forth. So, you know, um, that's what we would be looking for. So you have the targets on here. I'm looking for around the $6 range, $5 to $6 range up here. Makes sense for XRP. Uh, for Litecoin, we want all the way back up to like 1200 up here. For Ethereum, we're looking above the 10K range over here. And then, uh, did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? Well, no, then XRP, you know, I already did that one. That was the first one. Um, and that's basically it. So those are our big four guys right there, right? So, boom, 118,000. Woo. -hoo. Over 10K. Woo. -hoo. Up here. And Litecoin over 1200 up here. All right. And XRP, the last one I'll repeat it again. I'm just repeating all these for you above the five to $6 range all the way up here. So calculate those in your head and on the percentage and the basis in the, in the future. Um, and that's what I'm looking for going out from here. And I'm in no rush. You know, if we get certain patterns or certain price action, I will update you and tell you if I how much I want to sell of what I'm currently holding uh, on all of these. And I'll do them one by one. And I'll get the targets for you ahead of time. You know, I'll tell you where my limits are going to be set. So that way you can see, you know, where I'm planning on trading. And again, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm doing, I'm showing you what I do. I'm not here going over and telling you what to do. Um, you know, my trading is something I share with others. I do not go over and uh, tell others 
uh, what they should do or what they need to do. So let's be very clear on that. I keep getting these questions. Um, and I also don't have anything to do with the bots, so please don't ask me about the bots. And I also uh, don't do the scalp or swing signals. That is another trader or a couple of traders on here that do those. And uh, that's basically it. I hope you guys have a great week. And I'll update you if anything changes. But what we're looking for is the price action right now in the summertime to probably not be exciting at all. Uh, if it does get exciting, that would be interesting. And we break out here, that would be very bullish. Then we might make numbers that go well beyond this and out into the summer. And maybe we'll just get craziness. Uh, if you get a lot of heat during this period, which I would not expect, I'm expecting more things to go sideways. So I would be looking for prices to just meander sideways and maybe even down for the rest of the summer um, going out. If I had to go over, I would say something like maybe like this. And it to become boring, I would not, it would not be un unlikely for it to become boring from this point on. Okay. Where we can just, let's make it a blue box to show you. And it could extend out like that to the end of this triangle here in time. And then once past that, then we're going to be look for some big upward moves to catch back up to the, the angle of ascension. And um, we'll see. I mean, this could also change to more like that um, and still fit within the projections. Uh, we just have to wait for the lines to match up and for the price action. But um, that's what I would be looking for. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.